Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Connor, uh, you referred to uh, international harmonization. I'd probably kind of like to have you expand on that, although I know there are oftentimes sensitivities since you do have to deal with some of these foreign entities uh, on an ongoing basis. But, um, you know, the FAA is, uh, you know, say they're, they're working with uh, the European uh, agency on, on a so-called mutual acceptance model. Uh, do you have any thoughts on uh, that, uh, whether, uh, you know, what sort of a priority that should be, what sorts of problems that could solve? Yes, thank you. Uh, I, um, I think from a standpoint of harmonization with, with respect to the regulations, I think that there's been a lot of work, really solid work that's been done, where, we, where there are tendency to be a little bit of um, differences maybe in the interpretation of those, of those regulations. And uh, clearly the Europeans and EASA have taken a, f a far uh, greater approach to delegation. Than, than maybe the, what we've been able to do here with the, in, in the United States. Uh, but I do believe that the FAA has done a, a very solid job of harmonizing, particularly with Europeans, around harmonization. Now, as the Chinese start to come into this world, then, then that's going to be another area that we've got to continue to focus on and a continuing around the entire world as we move forward. Okay, well, I, I won't ask you here, but perhaps you might opine to me privately on how you see sometimes a regulatory structure being used uh, on a competitive or anti-competitive basis, and I'd be interested in, in thoughts on that, but I won't ask you to do that okay. publicly. I would, uh, I would love to spend some time yeah, on that. Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, <laughs> and um, to, to follow up on um, uh, your statements, uh, Mr. Uh, Ilkman, is um, you know, one of the parts of the past testimony, since I know you're not here representing Gamma, but, you know, you do, you are involved with them, and they're saying because, and, you know, part of this is, you know, part, part of this is a, sometimes a bureaucratic problem, but sometimes it's a resource problem in terms of expertise or actual just people to staff these issues. And they're saying that what's happening is because of the demands on the oversight uh, in other areas and new problems that are having to be dealt with, such as uh, unmanned uh, aerial, aerial vehicles, that, um, you know, smaller businesses, manufacturers and avionics and other areas uh, who can't afford to, you know, go to an ODA are getting into a longer and longer and longer line for uh, certification. Uh, and do you have any thoughts on that, how we can address that? Um. Duncan Aviation has an ODA. We have uh, for yep, a number. Let's get a little closer to the mic. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Duncan Aviation does have an ODA, and we've had for a number of years. Right. Uh, it has been very successful us for us as well. It's uh, there is a lot of work. Uh, uh, we had a lot of staff. Uh, in our case, what we're able to do is also hire unit members that uh, we don't have on staff full time because of the, the variety of the airplanes that we work on. We don't have dedicated unit members for each of the applications that we use, so we hire them. As we do, uh, as we need, um, so that's how some of the smaller companies um, uh, go about doing it. Uh, I would say there are members on my committee of Gamma, the maintenance committee, that do not have ODAs, um, <clears throat> and I think uh, it depends on the region, on on how quickly um, you know they uh, uh, they could be sequenced or they could not be. Um, you know, I would say it's it, in our region that has never been an issue to my knowledge. Uh, but so I can't comment about all the other regions. Um, but clearly, it can be a challenge in certain smaller companies uh, who don't have or can afford to invest in the ODA. All right. Do you think uh, prioritization is an issue? I mean, you know, I mean, they pretty much work, in, at least in my experience, in dealing with problems with certification, uh, particularly as it relates to firefighting, has been a perennial issue in my part of the country. Uh, there's, there doesn't seem to be a prioritization process, like, okay, fire season's coming, we really need this certified. Well, there's 15 people who applied for this, 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 and this, which are not so time sensitive. I mean, do you think the process needs to set some levels of prioritization uh, better? Or it sounds like your region works pretty well, but. Yeah, it's difficult for me to answer that question since I'm not part of that uh, process at this point. Yeah, okay. Um, and just from the perspective of Boeing, uh, you know, to me, I mean, part of the solution here is a risk-based uh, system, which, uh, you know, where we're looking, you know, not spending much time on 
routine things, but we're spending time on critical components. Do you think the FAA is doing a good job of that, or could they do a better job of that? Excuse me. Um, I, obviously, I think that we are we're moving in, in, in the right direction. Are we moving fast enough? I think we could do a better job on some of the things that we are currently uh, involved with. Uh, you know, we have a thousand people that are part of our ODA organization, and uh, we have a tremendous amount of capability. Uh, I think it's time that we move to really risk-based approach to this systems engineering, allow us to do the detail engineering and, and those kinds of things. Where we sometimes come apart is a little bit on the interpretation of some of the requirements, and we should have a vehicle of which we can deal with that. But, um, you know, we're, we're working towards it. Are we working fast enough? It's about speed. It's about efficiency and those kinds of things. And with the level of certification that we're going to have coming towards us, in addition to the amount of work that we're having with delivering 723 airplanes, we're going to be doing a 4 million hours of engineering over the course of the next few years just on existing programs. And that's not to say on these new development programs. So there's a tremendous amount of work in order for us to continue to deliver airplanes that I think that we could do more of the, um, of the, of the work that maybe that the FAA is doing today. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.